hi guys it is leah welcome back to my channel and welcome to my june recap where we are going to talk about all the awesome books and maybe not so awesome who knows <laughs> books i read in june before we get started i just want to say i am having a freak out of contact dermatitis on my neck i'm not sure what is visible on camera but i just thought i would point it out before anyone else notices so there that's out of the way so i read eight books in the month of june which i felt so bad about at the end of the month because i read 12 in may so to only read eight in june i felt like a bit of a failure <laughs> to be honest I didn't make it through everything I put on my TBR, but I guess I did read some things that weren't on there, so. But hey, eight books is really, really good. I shouldn't be so hard on myself. Let's get into them because some of these were really, really great. The first book I read in the month of June was Illborn by Daniel T. Jackson. I read this on my Kindle, but I really hope to get a hard cup copy version of this when I go home. So if you watch my reading vlogs when I was reading this book, you would know that it is by far a new favourite for me. It was just amazing and I highly, highly recommend it for anyone who is into epic fantasy. I don't know, it was just so good. I think one day it is going to be a classic epic fantasy novel, but we'll see. I really, I really hope that happens for the author. But until then, I will encourage as many people as I can to read Illborn because it is so, so good. There's something for everyone in it. If you're typically like a girly fantasy or more of like a romantic reader, I wouldn't like put this to the side just because it's epic fantasy. I think it is very digestible even if that's your typical genre, but I also think it is very appropriate for fans of traditional epic fantasy. And what I liked about it is it just it read so well. I like epic fantasy where we really get time to know the characters before things start heading off and you get a really nice balance in this book where you get to know the characters very well but things are constantly happening but you can follow it it's not like oh we're at war for no reason there's a story being told and i appreciate that story and i really like it and that is probably my preferred format of epic fantasy so for me this book was perfect i literally wouldn't change a thing so please read it <laughs> then i read the elite by kira cass this is the second book in the selection series oh my god <laughs> back to back five star reads was pretty good i didn't expect it to be a five star and it's not a five star because it's perfect the way illborn was it's a five star because i just literally enjoyed it so much there were like some things that were wrong with the book i suppose but I was willing to forgive them for the sake of the story. That book had no right being as exhilarating as it was. I was like, this is a romance for like teen readers. This will be super casual. It was not super casual. It was not. I wanted to pull my hair out. My heart rate was beating so fast. I started at 10 p.m. and I was finished by 1 a.m. I rarely, if ever, stay up to read books, so really really good so i am excited to read the third book in the series but yeah the elite was definitely one that caught me off guard i enjoyed the first one and i didn't think the second one would be as good and i was surprised because i enjoyed it far more even than the first one so there you go i am glad i decided to pick up this series i wasn't sure if it would be like my thing but i love it the rest of this list i don't think is in reading order but we'll just kick on with it I read Ruben Sacks by Amy Levy. This is published by Persephone Books. This is on the shorter side for a classic for sure. So this book was actually first published in 1888, but then it fell out of print and was picked up again later by Persephone Books. And I'm very glad they did pick this up because I really, really enjoyed this book. It was actually very insightful. The Persephone Books advertised this book as like the jewish jane austen um and i would say like there's definitely some truth to that if anything this was a really interesting deep dive into what life might have been like for upper class jews living in london in the late 1800s you know we get a lot of that sort of content in 
some of the female written literature from the time, but it's from typically traditional English um, backgrounds. And being Jewish has and always will have unique connotations and the lifestyle is slightly different. And it's interesting to see the way that Jewish society and English society into place slash don't into play during that period of time. I really, really enjoyed this. It was it was well paced. It was heart wrenching in a really unexpected way, and it was very realistic. I thought so. I actually really, really do recommend that people read Reuben Sachs if they are fans of classics. It's really not long. Um, it, you should be able to read it in a day and it's just it was really unique and different and i'm very glad i read it and i'm very sad that um amy levy didn't live long enough to tell more stories because i think i think she would be like jane austen in prevalence if only we had got more works like reuben sachs from her then i will mention a shadow in the ember by jennifer l armentrout i was very unsure going into this book I have read almost all of the From Blood and Ash series. Uh, earlier this year, I read A War of Two Queens, which was the fourth book in that series, and it was a massive disappointment for me. So I had trust issues going into the prequel series, Fire in the Flesh, because I just wasn't sure. I was worried that JLA would do to Fire in the Flesh what she did to From Blood and Ash um, and more or less ruin the series but I was assured by a lot of people that Fire in the Flesh was better than From Blood and Ash and I really enjoyed the first two books in the From, From Blood and Ash series not so much like the third I was iffy on and the fourth I just really found pointless and contrite and she changed she, she just changed the story and character relationships in a way that didn't make sense. However, I did still want to try Shadow in the Ember because I <laughs> I decide to trust people when they tell me um, that books are good and that doesn't always work out for me but for the most part it does work out pretty well. Um, so I actually really enjoyed Shadow in the Ember. I would give it like a, I think I gave it like a four, uh, like maybe a four and a half at a push but I'd say probably more solidly a four. Um, I had good enjoyment of the book. I really like Nick Doss, our male main character. However, my one, one and only criticism really was that our main female character, Serafina, Sarah, is basically a carbon copy of Poppy from Blood and Ash. So do with that information what you will. Um, but Poppy was not my favorite female main character in the world so to have her basically replicated it just felt like lazy really i don't know if it was intentional that they were so similar or not in in character but i don't know i thought she could have done more in making them a little bit more distinguished from one another i'm sure for the most part the parallels are intentional i just didn't particularly enjoy that aspect let's talk about some manga shall we a sign of affection by uh su morishita <sighs> This is the um, collection volume of volumes one, two, and three. So I got to enjoy the first three volumes of this manga. This was really, really beautiful. It's so sweet. It's so cute. This is just like the perfect heartfelt slice of life romantic manga. And I definitely recommend it. I really hope to watch the anime soon. Um, but first, I really want to continue on with the manga and read the rest of the volumes eventually. It was just so sweet, and I thought the art style was really simple but really cute. The character designs are very beautiful. It was just... it's perfect. It's so perfect. Five stars. One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. So this is one of the very, very, very talked about books on Book Talk. So I was excited and apprehensive going into this. When there's a lot of hype, it typically goes one or two ways. So, you know, I was prepared to be underwhelmed when I read this. And I'd even had mixed reviews from my friends. I had one friend who loved it and I had another friend who DNF'd it. So I was very unsure going into this, but I ended up being pleasantly surprised, even though it took me a while to get there. Um, so this was a four for me. It was good, not great. I just kind of thought it was weird. <laughs> um, my, my main criticism is only this. I didn't 
really like the magic system. It's super unique, which I think is really nice, but I, I just didn't really like it. I thought, I thought it was dull and limited, but that's all really. Um, and then other things about it were just like funky, but not, not bad per se. Like the entire concept of the book of her having this nightmare inside of her, it's very like Eddie and Venom. So I just found that funny and I couldn't stop drawing that comparison while reading it. But towards the ending, I, I really, really enjoyed it. I think it really redeemed itself in the last 25%. Not that I didn't like it in the first 75%, but I think um, my enjoyment of it really increased in the last 25%. And that last 25% made me open to reading the next book. So I look forward to doing that eventually and seeing where they go from where they left off because it was, a, it was a very good ending. I really, really liked it. Another manga, Darling in the Franks, volumes one and two. Uh, this is by Code Triple Zero and the art is by Kentaro Yabuki. Darling in the Franks is one of my favorite anime. So I was very happy to finally start reading the manga. At this stage in the manga, it is basically panel for panel from the anime but I know once you hit chapter 40 it starts diverging from the story in the anime but I just I just love it so much that I loved it being more or less panel for panel um this is a lot more uncensored let's just say <laughs> um it's heavier on the nudity but I I just like the character interpretations in this book I think the character designs are very slightly different but are not exact to the manga like I think like I found Ichigo a lot cuter in the manga um which I didn't get from her from the anime she just seemed a little bit more stoic to me in the anime but um to me she's a lot cuter in the manga so I just really enjoyed this it's an like an easy five star from me just because I am so partial to enjoy it already but I do really look forward to continuing. I can't wait to see what changes they do make to the story. And the last thing I read this month, though certainly not the least, was Guild by Raven Kennedy. This is a book that I have seen on the shelves when I have been out shopping for years now and the covers have always drawn me in but I've just never picked it up. After seeing some people on Bookstagram though pick it up recently and really really enjoy it, I decided I would finally do it. I really, really like this book. I tore through it very quickly. The right from the beginning, like from the get go, you're like in it and shit is happening. And you're like, wow, <laughs> this was nuts. It was very, very different. It's very different. I really, really liked it though. The only thing I had trouble with was like visualization of the main character, just on account of the fact that she's gold and she has like these things that come out of her back and I just always had trouble like imagining their movement, imagining their texture, their consistency, just because it is something that's so inhuman. Um, but I, I like their purpose, I think they're cool. I really like the plot twists and I've heard there's even more plot twists to come in the second book. So I'm very, very excited for that. I think I give Guild like a 4.5. It wasn't perfect, but I really, really enjoyed it. So, I mean, what more, what more can you ask for? Before I finish out here, an honorable mention to two books that I started in June, but did not finish. I started Magician by Raymond E. Feist, which I'm 45% of the way through. Watch my vlogs and you'll hear my thoughts on that. It's not that it's bad, it's not that it's bad. No one jumped down my throat, but there's a reason I didn't finish it. I really wish I had finished it though, but Anyway, it doesn't matter. And the other book I started in June but did not finish was Wolf Road by Alice Roberts. But I have, I have finished it now. We're in July. Just spoiler alert for next month. But yeah, that's all from me. These are the eight books I read in the month of June. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing if you did to see more from me. Check out my channel for reading vlog playlists, TBR playlists, monthly recap playlists if you want to see more content from me. And comment down below what books you read in the month of June. And I will see you guys down in the comments section and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Bye.